Hi everyone. As I was looking at some of the projects that you guys were presenting tonight, uh, it dawned on me that I should put together a short video showcasing how to switch between forward kinematics and inverse kinematics in a scene to allow you to control your limbs a little bit easier, to allow you to control your joint structures. So with that in mind, I put together this short scene where we have a, a bone structure here. We have this joint structure with an IK set, um, handle on it already. So let me actually dig in there. And you will see that I do have an IK handle. And this IK handle allows me to basically do what we've been doing in class, which is bend that joint. So that works. Now, on this side, I have what I will be using as an, uh, an FK setup for this joint. And this FK setup doesn't have an IK handle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach these rings, these little circles that I created by using curves using this tool here. And then I went ahead and aligned each one of them onto its specific joint so that I can control that the rotation of those joints by using the handles. Then I went ahead and put them all into one little structure so that they are organized and they basically obey the hierarchy so that if I rotate this one, all the other two will rotate as well. So with that in mind, oh, I also have a third joint, which is the one that is going to be influenced by these two. So this joint in the middle that is inside this box, actually, let me hide that box. This joint will be uh, depending on a setting that I'm going to create in this handle here, it's going to be controlled either by the inverse kinematic setup or by the forward kinematic setup. So how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and finish setting this up. I am going to make the, uh, the IK handle a child of my hand, what I would call the hand IK controller, which is this object here. This circle is also a circle that I created a curve. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it in here into the hierarchy. I'm going to drag it, middle mouse drag it into the hand IK. So now my hand IK geometry controls my IK handle, as you can see. So I can go ahead and control my IK handle from there. So that structure takes care of that setup for this joint. Now, on the other joint over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, orient constraint each one of these joints to those circles that I have created. So these become the controllers to that particular joint. So as you know from what we've done in class, the first thing you select is the actual controller, in this case. Then I'm going to go up here into the hierarchy, and I'm going to select the, the first joint for forward kinematics. So I'm going to control select this FKJ1, which is this joint here. And with the FK circle selected, this one here, select that second, the joint. Then go under the rigging menu, constrain, and then I'm going to choose orient options. I want to make sure that I maintain offset active, and I want to make sure that I am controlling all different axes. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and click add, and now that will control the entire bone structure. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for this one here. So I'll select this one and control select FKJ2, which is that one, and do an orient constraint, and then the same thing for the third one, this one, and FKJ3. FKJ3 is the object that I'm controlling. Orient. There you go. So now this guy, these guys control each one of them, controls their respective um, joint. See how if I rotate that object, the whole thing rotates. If I rotate this one, then that portion of the joint rotates. So I have control over that. So this has been rigged. This has been rigged. Now what we want to do is pass those values onto this joint in the middle. So to do so, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and select this object here. Now you don't have to select this object. I just choose to select this object right now because that's the easiest thing. But you can actually do what, what I'm about to do, with it, which is add an attribute to any object. You can create a separate controller. And as a matter of fact, in a regular setup, you will probably have a kind of like a control panel for everything that we're doing from which you control all the values that we are creating. In this case, I am going to add an attribute to this object. Like I said, it doesn't have to be this object. It could be any other object, just somewhere that you know that this attribute will be added. So in this case, I want to select this object, and I want to go to the attributes here on, under the channels. I want to go ahead and add another attribute in here. So I'll go to Edit, Add Attribute, and this new attribute I am going to call Forward Kinematics FK underscore IK. So that is the switch between forward kinematics and inverse, kinema inverse kinematics. So the values between uh, that this new um, attribute that it's going to be reaching between can go anywhere between whatever values you want. 
a common setup is to do like zero to a hundred or zero to one or zero to ten or something like that. It depends on how detailed you want to get. For me, I'm just going to use zero to one for this one. So zero is the minimum and one is the maximum. Make sure that you use a float, which is basically a number that can have any number of um, 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 uh, fractional values. Um, and as you can see, there's other data types that you can use for these switches so or for these attributes. So uh, this is something worth investigating in order to add controllers to your objects. So for now, we're just going to use a float, which is going to give us any number between 0 and 1, including fractions. So let's go ahead and click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You'll notice that I now have uh, the new attribute listed here. And I'm going to use that as the switch. Let me go ahead and click on the header itself and middle mouse drag in the canvas in the actual viewport to see if it actually works. And it is working. So we're good. This is working. We keep it at zero for now. And now what we want to do is pass those values onto this particular, the values of rotation of the joints from this particular, from the IK or the FK, depending on the value of this. So when this is zero, the value of the FK will be the one that controls. When this is one, the value of the IK is going to control what this joint is going to do. So how do we do that? Well, we need to capture some values first and then do a little bit of coding. So the first thing I want to do is I want to capture the rotation. Where do I apply the rotation value for this joint? So let me open up my uh, notepad and I'm going to also open up basically for this where I write the code for it, which is under animation editors, expression editor. So in the expression editor, I want to capture the rotation value for this for Y. I'm only changing Y and Z. Remember the rotation X, X is parallel to the way in the direction in which the bone is going. So we never rotate that. We only rotate Y and Z. So to do that, I'm going to go under the attributes for it under this window under the expression editor, make sure that I have joint one selected and I'm going to select rotate Y. So I want to change this value. That's the value I want to affect. So let me go ahead and capture that value here on my notepad. Then I'm going to go into the forward kinematics setup and I'm going to select the Y value for FK joint one rotate Y as well because that's the value we, one of the values we will be passing. At the same time it only follows that this one is probably going to be IKFJ1 rotate Y. There it is. IKJ1 rotate Y. So that's another value that I'm going to be adding. And last but not least, the value from the handle here, which is the switch, this one here, the I FK IK. So that is this value at the bottom here. So I'll select that, and that will be my switch. Now, the equation for this is fairly straightforward. What we want to do is we want to affect the value of rotation Y of joint 1. So the equation would look something like this. This joint rotation value, it's equal to the value of the hand IK, which is either 0 or 1, or any, anywhere between 0 and 1, times the rotation of rotation Y of the inverse kinematics. So what does that give us? If this is 0, then the rotation value of inverse kinematics would be 0, and that's the value that that provides us. If this is 1, then the value of the joint rotate Y equals the rotation of the IK handle, which is this guy right here. So in order to compensate for that, to reverse the values, we need to add to this another set of values, basically the opposite. 1 minus the value of IK. So that basically is the switch. So if this is 0, then 1 minus 0 times the forward kinematics value will provide the value. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me redo this really quick. Let me grab this guy from here and place it here. So let me walk you through this equation really quick. Just by adding numbers, it will make it a little bit easier. This is how it, this reverses. So we're passing the, uh, the value of whatever the, res the result of this to the rotation y value of joint one, which is the middle row, this one here. That's joint one. So we're passing the values. If hand k, fk, I, I, I had IKFK, which is the value IKFK that we created, the one that we added to the hand handler. If we 
if that value equals to 1, then 1 times the rotation of the IK handle is the value. So 1 times that, whatever that rotation value, is the value that we're passing. Plus, since this is 1, at this point, 1 times that, over here, 1 minus that same value, 1 minus 1 equals 0, times whatever comes after equals 0. So it doesn't matter. This value, this part of the equation at that point, it doesn't influence anything. Therefore, the forward kinematics has no influence on that particular joint. Now, the reverse. When this is 0, 0 times the IK rotation equals 0. 0 times whatever equals 0. So this is equals to 0. Since this value is 0, 1 minus 0 equals 1 times forward kinematic rotation. Now the forward kinematic rotation is affecting that value. So that is how that equation works. Fairly straightforward. Let me cop copy that equation and add it to joint 1 under the rotate y. Let me go ahead and create. And I'm going to use the same values for rotate z. Remember, we're only affecting rotation y and rotation z. So let me go ahead and paste it here and make the changes to the y to z. So joint rotate, joint 1 rotate z. And this one rotate z as well. And for the fk, rotate z. Now let's create that as well. And so this value, if I make the value of ik 1, we said that that's when the ik controls that middle joint. So let's go ahead and test it. Now that this is 1, let's select this guy. Press the W key here to control. And as you can see, I am controlling. Now you see that this did not bend like my IK. And that is because we only applied the changes to joint 1. We didn't apply them to the joint 2 of that structure. So we need to undo this. Let's go back and revisit this joint. This time, let's grab the information from here and apply it to joint 2 the second joint in that chain. So let's go here, select that second joint, select this rotate Y, and change this to rotate to joint two. So let's select and change all instances of joint ones to joint twos. There we go. And select this, copy it, create. Now let's apply it to the Z. So joint two, Z. Change it all the way to C's here. And this one. And click Create. Now, this joint should, because the value of AK, IK equals 1, should obey this joint over here. Okay? So now let's make that value 0. When I make that value 0, let's go ahead and select this object over here, this controller, and choose the rotate tool, and you'll notice that the rotation obeys the rotation of my joint. So that works to make the switch. Now you can have something in between if you need to. I don't see a, a, a real clear reason for doing that, but if you have this at 0.5, basically you'll notice that I have a bit of control over this from the IK joint and from the FK joint at the same time. So it kind of cuts in between the influence of the different joints into that center joint. So now let me reset this to its regular position. And with that setup already, at this point would be where I go ahead and select, I would um, bring back the geometry that I have hidden, the cube that I had placed in there, and I can now skin that joint structure to that cube. Okay, let me actually go ahead and see what this is. This is one on what value is this right now? Let's make it one and let's bring this out a little bit so that I strain it out a little bit. And now that the joint is in there, Let's go ahead and select that joint, shift select the, the geometry, go to skin, bind skin. Remember the settings that we have been using in class, geodesic voxel and dual quaternion, just in case you have uh, n-gons or triangles in your geometry, that will help you. Click bind skin, this takes a second, and now the skin will respond to my controllers, along with changing this value here if I want to make use of my 
FK if necessary. So this is how you switch between both FK and IK uh, and control a separate third joint by using those controllers.